Hello, hello, hello. Uh, welcome 2020 Flight Simmers. Uh, today is episode 3, and today we're going to be talking about how to use our gauges uh, and using the VORs to line us up for an ILS and also programming in an ILS into the radios and uh, fly an ILS approach. Now, procedurally, this is not going to be correct. The only purpose for this video is to show you how to operate all the gauges to be able to fly the ILS and know what the different uh, abbreviations are going to be when they come up here. So, okay. So we'll get more into it once we get going on here. Um, but again, uh, so today we're in China and we are going to be flying uh, ZSQZ to ZSAM. Uh, we are using some custom scenery packs today as well as some performance mods. Uh, uh, links will be down in the description. If you have any questions about anything, uh, go ahead and post them down in the comments. I'll get back to you. If it's your first time joining us today, I want to welcome you to the channel. And uh, hit that subscribe button. You'll get updates on all of our future videos. So today uh, is going to be following in the series of the Cessna 152. And again, uh, we're going to be flying an ILS. We will learn how to uh, do a proper ILS approach. Uh, in a future video. Uh, so let's get in the plane and uh, get started with everything. Alright, so the first thing uh, I want to make sure we do is we have our throttles and mixtures set out. All of our switches are off. We have our elevator trim in a takeoff position. Flaps are up. Let's make sure everything is working properly. Park and brake is on. We're going to go ahead and hit the primer three times. Two, three. We're going to hit the battery, hit the alternator, go ahead and throw the beacon light and the strobe light. Yo, clear prop. Left and right. We're going to go ahead and start her up. Oh, one thing I almost forgot again, and I talked about this earlier fuel valve. Now hit the primer three times. Full in on the mixture, crack the throttle just a hair, and start her up now. Fires right up, purrs like a kitten. Hit them nav lights. Uh, we're going to go ahead and get on our radios. I do like this mod because uh, it does turn all the radios off. That's on, that's on, and this one. Alright. Go ahead and turn on our transponder. I'm going to just get it in the on position right now. Uh, our VFR. Squawk is 7,000. Check our oil temp and pressure. So we're still a little low on temp, so we got a little time. All right, so the first thing uh, we're going to do is a uh, briefing here. So I'm going to bring up the flight plan for today. And if anybody's wondering what we're using right here, this is the uh, little nav maps, the newest version 2.6.14. You can see it right up here in the corner. So we're going to be departing uh, right here. Uh, this is the ZSQZ. We're going to follow a path of 247. We're going to intercept course uh, from this VOR at uh, 235. So we did a uh, episode yesterday in episode 2 of how we're going to follow a, an intercept course. Uh, so that's what we're going to do today and follow an intercept course to here. Once we intercept this, we'll be on our uh, VOR2 or NAV2 radio and then uh, once we proceed on this course we're going to switch our NAV1 radio uh, and we're going to input the ILS information right here and let's see what that ILS information is okay so the ILS information is right here 109.7 so we'll enter that in uh, the nav one radio and then we will switch over to that and follow that in we're gonna have to come in at about 2600 feet on this flight so the total height for the uh, climb will be 2700 feet alright so let's move that off to the side so now we have to program these radios right here uh, to match those uh, VOR channels and then uh, put in our radio right here so let's go ahead and do that now 
the first VOR is 117, so go ahead and pop in 117. Transfer. Uh, second VOR is 114.5. Pop that in. And you want to make sure that you have that ILS frequency handy. And I do. Uh, that is 109.7. So as soon as we switch over to our NAV2 radio in flight, we'll then input the ILS frequency. 109.7 in our one radio. All right, so now that we got that set up, we just need to uh, input our radial. So the first one is going to be 247. Let's get that in here. All right, and VOR2 will be coming in at uh, 235. Other way. All right, so we got 235 in the second one and 247 in the first one. So we're all set to go there. Now we have to make sure our altimeter is set correct, so let's get the ATIS information. Zulu Sierra Quebec, Zulu Airport information Alpha. 29.47. Point point Wind 243 at 3. Visibility 6. Sky condition. View clouds at 600 feet, view clouds at 4,600 feet, view clouds at 12,000 feet. Alrighty. Temperature 2947. Alright, that's set. Altimeter 29 decimal 47. So now we can go to clearance. Uh, this time we're gonna we filed an IR, uh, IFR flight. Uh, this isn't going to be a true IFR flight just because uh, we're not flying the appropriate paths. Uh, we're not going to be flying any waypoints um, other than our waypoint that uh, we generated ourselves uh, when we did this uh, path right here. So. Uh, Hopefully everything goes as planned. Again, we're going to fly this heading, intercept course on this, switching over to our ILS frequency uh, after we intercept, and then fly the ILS the rest of the way in. We'll show you how that works on the gauges, and we'll show you how that uh, um, you should have some different information that's going to populate up here. And also, you're going to now follow a glide slope, um, which will be uh, something new. So instead of trying to keep this centered, you're also going to try to keep this horizontal line centered uh, from up and down as well. So you'll see what I mean as we get closer out. So let's Ground get our clearance. Ground system November 489er Tango Golf IFR to Zion and ready to copy. System November 489er Tango Golf is cleared to Shaman Airport and filed. Take off runway 03 climb and maintain 3,000 feet. Departure frequency is 120 decimal, 2 squawk 4534. 4, so our squawk frequency is going to be right here. We're going to set this to 4534. And we're going to acknowledge that clearance. Cessna November 489er Tango Golf cleared to Zyaman Airport as filed. Take off runway 03 climb and maintain 3000 feet. Departure on 120 decimal 2 squawk 453. I'm also going to put this in altitude mode now just so it's done. Cessna 9er Tango Golf readback is correct. Contact ground on 121 decimal 625 when ready to taxi. Okay. So now we can also verify that we've got the proper um, uh, VOR frequency in the radios by verifying the Morse code on that so we can do that real quick hit the nav 1 button and hit identify alright that's the correct code so we're correct there the second frequency did not populate yet so you probably won't get any Morse code on that all right, so let's go take a look outside. We're using live weather today. I did turn the time up a bit uh, from where I am right now. 
as you can see the windsock we don't have uh, much much crosswind so today should be an excellent flight hope everybody enjoys and if you have any questions again uh, please post them down in the comments uh, below so let's request our taxi and get Ground out of here. Cessna November 489er Tango Golf with Alpha ready to taxi IFR. Get the taxi lights on. Cessna November 489er Tango And just so I don't forget, I'm going to throw the veto heat on now. Using taxiway alpha. Contact tower on 130 decimal, zero when ready. Okay, make sure we got brakes. Check our elevators and ailerons. Rudder's moving. All right. I think we can safely say we're good to go. Park and break in. Let's roll out. I forgot to uh, say yes. Taxi to and hold short runway zero tree using taxiway Alpha Cessna Niner Tango Golf. Okay. Uh, I went past a little bit. Uh, what we're going to do is go ahead and pop on the uh, brakes here. And we're going to do a little run up right here and just make sure that. Our magnetos are correctly operating. Get us up to about 1800 RPM, which we are. We're now going to go ahead and throw into left and watch the RPM drop. There we go. Back up. We're going to put it in the right. And we have the RPM drop. Now, because we have the pitot heat on now, we've got our 100 RPM drop back to normal, back up to 1800, we can come back off the throttle, go ahead and get that park and brake in, hit tower, and get our takeoff clearance. Tower Cessna November 489er Tango Golf at runway 03 ready for departure. Now we have to remember IFR we're to going to uh, try to achieve 3,000 feet. Cessna November 489er Tango Golf altimeter 29 decimal 47 wind 243 at tree. Cleared for takeoff runway 03. 2947. Let's just make sure. Verify. Clear for takeoff. Clear for takeoff runway 03 Cessna November 489er Tango. I'm going to go ahead and get the flaps down to 10%. Right. We're going to back taxi down here a little bit, and then we're going to swing around. I think that's good enough. It's a little fast. Okay, here we go. Full throttle. It's a lot of right rudder here. Air speed's alive. 50, 60, and we're off. Now again, we're going to keep full flaps down until we get about 500 feet up, full mixture, and today we are going to uh, come back on the mixture a bit. Try to keep maintaining that uh, 500 feet or more. Alright, so we know our first heading is uh, 237, so we are now going to uh, turn off to our left, 
to bring our heading, trying not to exceed our maximum turning. Cessna Niger Tango Golf, contact Nanchang Center on 120.5. for Cessna Niger Tango Golf. Nanchang Center, Cessna November 489 Tango Golf, 700 feet, climbing 3,000 feet. Now we can uh, bring our flaps up. Climb and maintain 3,900 feet. Climb and maintain 3,900 feet, Cessna Niner Tango. No, we may not even be able to get there. We'll see. So we should be intercepting uh, the course uh, pretty soon. Cessna Niner Tango Golf, acknowledge last transmission. 120 decimal 2 for Cessna Niner Tango Golf. Okay. So now we have intercepted. We're going to pull to 237. Zion approach Cessna November 489 Niner Tango Golf is at 1,300 feet, climbing 3,900 feet. All right, so everything looks good so far. Uh, we're going to keep our climb trying to keep around 80 knots or so to get up to uh, 3,000 feet. I think that's what they wanted us to be at. 3,900 feet, so we may not even get there. But we're trying to get this back into uh, play right here, and we will uh, shortly. All right, our second VOR came into play. So now uh, we'll know when we get on our intercept course for that. And uh, you can see the arrow pointing towards it, so it lets us know that we're going towards it. The VOR is in front of us, and that shows us that the VOR is in back of us. Now we'll get back on our course of 237, still maintaining climb. Sorry, 247. All right, so we're still in it at full throttle. We're going to take a little bit of mixture out now. Try to get back on course here and try to get up to our 3,900 feet. You can see that uh, we're just about coming into. Uh, getting this line straight, so right about in our crosshairs here. And then we're going to turn us to uh, 247. Alright, now we can turn us to 247. Alright, that should uh, lock us in here. Now, as uh, soon as this one comes into play, uh, you'll see this come right to center. Once that comes to center, we're then going to follow this course, and that course is going to be 235. So, let's see how it goes. Must be a little windy up here today. Keep getting blown off course, so we're gonna just fly a course of uh, 250, or maybe even a little bit more, and that should counteract. Yeah, it looks like we have 12 knot winds from the north, so. So we're just about at 3,900 feet here. We're 
right at 3,900 now. So we can come back and try to trim us out here. Keep us going straight. And we can also pull back on the throttle some. And just checking to make sure we're still right around that 250 and we're still off a little bit, so that's perfect. A little bit too much throttle out. So we're just going to maintain this. Uh, you can actually see this needle starting to come into play right now. Try to level us off here as best we can. But we want to keep us around that 3,900 feet. Okay, again, we're not going to be following any of these transitions. We're going to follow our own path. And uh, I think the runway we're going to be going to may be right over here somewhere. So now we're going to go ahead and descend. Descend and maintain 3,000 feet Cessna Niner Tango Golf. Just controlling our descent here uh, with the throttle and a little bit of trim. Make sure that uh, we bring us back as we're almost lined up here centered, so we want to get us about 247. Perfect. Coming down at about 500 feet per minute. Speed is good, right about 100 knots. A little windy. Gonna add a little throttle to it. We're also going to add a little bit of mixture back in. Now the reason for the uh, adding the mixture back in now is because we are descending, so the air is getting a little bit thicker, so we need uh, a little bit more fuel. So we're almost at uh, 3,000 feet, and as you can see, our second VOR is coming into play here. All the way up. So now we can see our. Uh, radios. So now I'm going to add throttle back to it to bring us back up again so we're not descending. Cessna Niner Tango Golf, you are one five miles northeast of Shaman. Contact Shaman Tower on 130 decimal, zero when inbound. Tower on 130 decimal, zero Cessna Niner Tango Golf. Diamond Tower, Cessna, November 4, okay, Niner, Tango uh, Golf, as you one, see, we are almost, Mount Sulu, runway, two, three, approach. we are almost uh, November, in line Niner, with the VOR2, we are three. holding 3,000 feet, runway, two, three, approach. cleared for runway cleared two, three. Sulu, runway 23, approach Cessna Niner, Tango Golf. A little bit more throttle. Still maintaining that 247 until this uh, VOR here comes 
straight on. And uh, once that does, we then need to turn to uh, 235. Start turning now to two three five, and we are now going to program this one to one oh nine seven. Okay, a couple things you're going to notice that it just changed uh, from doing that. Uh, you're going to see here that uh, we have two off a little bit. You're going to notice here that we have two uh, uh, horizontal and a vertical bar. That shows us the glide slope that we're going to be following coming in. This also shows us uh, how far we are off from that glide slope. So as you can see we need to come to the right some more which is also indicated by this one as well. So we're going to continue coming right until we get uh, these lined up for us. Now, as this horizontal line starts coming down, we're going to want to follow this horizontal line down. So we're going to start bringing out some throttle. We have been cleared to land, so we're going to go ahead and put on our landing lights, throw on the taxi lights as well. I'm going to go full rich on the mixture. All right, so as you can see, uh, the glide slope is just above us, so we're coming in a little bit uh, too fast. All right, now the glide slope is right on us. We can take throttle back out, and we've almost centered up with the uh, ILS frequency right on the runway here. So once we come into alignment here, you can see the runway straight ahead. Then we can go ahead and turn. Uh, making left a left turn to straighten us up on the localizer. Now we're going to continue maintaining that 500 feet probably is going to be pretty good. And I'm going to go ahead and put down one layer of flaps. We need to counteract that. And I'm pulling out a lot of throttle now. We're still a little high. Now being high, you see that that needle is way down below us. Now we brought that needle up. And we're just about centered on the runway here. I'm gonna bring down the second layer of flap. Trim us a little bit down. As you can see, we're right on the glide slope. A little bit under. Now, sometimes these ILSs are not exactly aligned with the runways. So, in some instances, uh, and great possibly this one, uh, you can see that we need to be farther right, but surely. Uh, we're lined up with that runway here, so... So we may have to uh, just fly that on our own, but we're going to keep the glide slope in check to make sure we're coming down uh, properly. got a nasty 15 knot crosswind coming at us here so that doesn't help. Now once we get closer into the runway you're gonna see uh, some lights hopefully at the end of the runway here before lights. Now they're either red or white. Too red and too white means you're right on glide slope. If you have uh, three reds and one white means you're a little low. Four reds you're dead. 
and vice versa. If they're all white and you're way too high, you're going to overfly. So, we're cleared to land right now. Cleared to land runway 23. Cleared to land runway 23 Cessna 9 or Tango Golf. Again, we'll get into more of uh, approach procedures on a future episode. I just want to show everybody how we were using the radios and our OBS dials, our VORs, to uh, bring us in. And you can see we're right on glide slope, but you can also see that the ILS frequency must be sitting over here somewhere where the transmitter for that frequency is sitting over here. Alright, so we're a little high. That's okay, we can pull some throttle. And we still have one notch of flaps to go. We're not going to hit that until we get uh, pretty close, and that's going to bring us the rest of the way down to get us at our approach speed, uh, right around 60 knots or so. And as you can see, we are right on glide slope right now. We're lined up with the runway. That ILS frequency is a little off to the right. That's okay. We're coming in right on. Now, once you get to a certain point, that uh, frequency uh, or your glide slope is going to drop off. So once you get to that certain point, you're going to notice that glide slope will uh, just go completely red on you. You'll get all, all red lights, um, but that's because you're landing the plane. So we're going to go ahead and do full flaps now. It's going to bring us up just a little bit. That's okay. That puts us just a little over the glide slope, which is fine. I'm going to increase throttle just a smidge just to keep us right about 60 knots. And like I said, at some point they're all going to go red on you because uh, you're landing the plane. So we're almost in. We're just trying to keep our speed above 60 knots or right around 60 knots. Okay, we got our signal. Now these are uh, little beacon markers that uh, will light up for you. We'll talk about those in a future episode. Now the landing spot where you're supposed to land is right around up here. And that will be touchdown. So we can go ahead and put flaps up now so they're not in the way. So go ahead and turn your pedo heat off so that that doesn't burn that out. And we're going to try to make this next taxiway. Okay, so I think we're going to end the video here. I hope everybody got some good information. Again, if you have any questions, go ahead and pop them down in the comments. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. If you want a more in-depth look at any particular part of the plane, the radios, the gauges, uh, let me know down in the comments and uh, we will go ahead and put together a video for you on that. Uh, again, thanks for joining us today on 2020 Flight Simmers. Uh, we will see you on the next one.